If you're getting ready for a Praxis exam that has math questions, you might not have to do all the calculations in your head. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the graphing calculator that's available on some Praxis tests. If you haven't used the Praxis graphing calculator, don't worry, I've got you. In this video, I'm going to show you how it works, when to use it, and most importantly, how you can use it effectively to maximize your test score. Welcome to the Praxis Test Prep channel. I'm Elizabeth, a college professor and test prep expert with study.com. We're proud to partner with ETS, the official provider of the Praxis exams, to bring you the most accurate and up-to-date information straight from the source. By the end of this video, you'll have everything you need to use the on-screen calculator tool effectively and take the next step in your teaching career. Ready? Let's jump in. First things first, let's get acquainted with the on-screen graphing calculator, the TI-84 Plus CE. In addition to basic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, this calculator offers a range of advanced functions including trigonometric operations, logarithms, exponents, square roots, and more. Of course, it also does what the name says, graphs equations. It's designed to help visualize mathematical concepts, analyze functions, and perform complex calculations, allowing you to focus more on interpreting results and problem solving rather than manual arithmetic. So which Praxis exams will you see this calculator on? Just a few of them do, actually. Pause to see if the test you're preparing for is listed here. To be sure, though, it's a good idea to check your specific test's calculator policy before your exam date. Okay, so how do you get to it? During your Praxis, which is a computer test, the calculator is available directly within the test interface. You'll see the icon on the top left, which you can click to open the calculator. You can also move it around the screen to position it where it's most convenient for you. One key tip, practice navigating the calculator beforehand. If you aren't comfortable opening, using, and closing it in a hurry, you could waste valuable time during the test. Now, let's take a closer look at the calculator's layout. There's a lot here, so knowing how to use each function correctly can save time and prevent errors. Let's start with the display screen. This is where the numbers you input and the results of your calculations are going to appear. You've got a multi-line screen, so you can see multiple calculations at once, which is helpful when you're working through complex problems. There are also these up, down, left, and right arrows. These let you move around the display screen. These second and alpha buttons here increase the functionality of the calculator. See how nearly every button has a main function, as well as a blue function in the top left and a green function in the top right. The second button lets you access the blue functions, and the alpha button lets you use the green functions. It's a bit tricky here, though. Pressing either button only lets you use the sub function once, and then it reverts back to the primary function. But if you click the second and then the alpha button, you can lock the alpha button on to keep accessing the green alt functions. There isn't a lock feature for the second button, though. Okay, moving on. You can adjust the brightness of the screen with the second button and the up or down arrow. The alpha functions on the up and down arrows let you access your history and reuse things you've entered before by just scrolling to it and pressing the enter button. This is really handy when you have similar problems that use some of the same calculations. You don't have to re-enter everything. You can just reuse sections from your history to save some time. The mode button lets you switch between degrees, radians, normal notation, scientific notation, and more. Its second function turns off the mode. Next to that is the delete key with the insert second function. You can use the arrow keys to scroll around and either remove errors or insert missing components in your calculations. You can start a new calculation after pressing enter for the previous problem to keep all your work on screen if you want. But you can also use the clear button to remove the last calculation from the screen. Let's keep going. The calculator has a numeric keypad with the digits 0 through 9, as well as some basic operation keys, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The second functions of the number keys, 1 through 6, on this calculator are used to quickly access lists, which are helpful when you're working with data sets or need to store multiple values for statistics. You can enter values into these lists and then perform operations on the entire list at once. 
The seven, eight, and nine second functions are lowercase letters you can use as variables in equations. For each of the number keys, the alpha functions give you letters to use in equations. The exceptions are the three key, which has the theta symbol as its alpha function, and the zero, which has an underscore bracket. The second functions of the arithmetic keys are a lowercase e to use as a variable, open and close brackets, and a memory function. The alpha functions are capital letters and quotation marks you can use in equations. Use the enter button to get the final result of a calculation. Using the second button with the enter key displays your previous entry. Very helpful if you need to repeat the same part of a problem for multiple steps. The alpha function also calculates a problem displayed. The calculator also has some more advanced function keys, like the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons for trigonometry. Their second functions will calculate the inverse trig functions, and their alpha functions are capital letters you can use in equations. If you want to calculate logarithms, you'll use the log button for base 10 logarithms and the ln button for natural logarithms. The log button's second function computes 10 raised to a power, and the natural log buttons calculate powers of e. Both of these keys will give you a capital letter as the alpha function. If you need to square any numbers, the x squared button does that for you. Its second gives you a square root, and its alpha function is another capital letter for equations. The caret button raises numbers to a specified power, and pressing second with it gives you the pi symbol. Using its alpha functions gives you a capital H for equations. You can use the Applications or Apps button to access applications that are pre-installed or added to the calculator. These apps can give you extra functionality depending on what you're working on. For example, you might have apps for advanced math functions, statistics, or even graphing, which help you with different kinds of problems and calculations. When you press the second button and then the Applications button, it accesses the Angle feature. This function allows you to quickly change the mode of angle measurement between degrees, radians, and gradients, depending on what you're working with. And the alpha function will give you a capital B. The x raised to the negative 1 power button is used to represent the inverse of a number or expression. Its secondary function is the matrix function. This lets you access different matrix-related functions, like creating a matrix and performing matrix operations. And the alpha function is a capital D. The X, T, Theta, N button has various uses that work with different modes. The default uses the variable X, which you can use when working with functions and equations, particularly when graphing. In parametric mode, it accesses the T. In polar mode, it enters Theta. And in sequence mode, it represents N. This button is essential for defining equations that involve variables. When you press second with this button, it accesses the link function, which is used for transferring files and data between calculators via a USB cable. Not something you'll use during the praxis, obviously. When you press alpha with this button, it inserts a fraction template, which allows you to enter fractions with a numerator and denominator format easily. The stat button gives you access to statistical calculations, including editing lists, running one variable and two variable statistical analyses, and performing regressions. Pressing second with the stat opens the list management menu, where you can sort, sum, and manipulate stored lists. You can use this for statistics and data analysis. The math button is your shortcut to a variety of math functions and operations. When you press it, you'll see a menu that includes a range of options. This includes basic operations like absolute value, square roots, and factorials. You can also find advanced operations like solving equations, finding derivatives and integrals, and working with complex numbers. Statistical and matrix functions like standard deviation, means, and working with matrices are also included here. So if you're working on something like calculus, algebra, or even statistics, the math button gives you easy access to a bunch of tools to help you out. If you press second, then the math button, you'll access the test function. This is used for logical operations or comparisons. It helps you test whether certain conditions are true or false in equations or expressions. The math button's alpha function is a capital A. The program button is used to access and run programs you've written or stored on the calculator, letting you automate tasks or execute custom functions. Draw its secondary function lets you access tools for drawing graphs, like plotting points or adding shapes to your graph. 
which is handy when you want to visualize equations or data. This button's alpha function is a capital C. The variable button stores and recalls variables, and if you press second with it, you can find probability distribution functions such as normal and binomial distributions, which are essential for statistics. The comma button inserts a comma, so you can separate different arguments in functions, lists, or expressions. Its secondary function is handy for entering numbers in scientific notation. It lets you quickly type numbers instead of typing out the full power of 10. Its alpha function will give you a capital letter. You can use the open and close parentheses buttons in expressions. This helps you group parts of an equation or function to control the order of operations. The second function of these give you left and right curly brackets, and your alpha functions are capital letters. The store button allows you to assign a value to a variable, which is useful for storing results you'll need later. Its secondary recall function retrieves your stored values, and its alpha function is a capital X. You can use the period key to insert a decimal point in numbers. This key's secondary function gives you the I symbol, which represents the imaginary unit in complex numbers. The alpha function is the colon symbol. You could use this to separate arguments in certain functions or define ranges in lists or matrices. The negative symbol key is typically used for entering negative numbers or subtraction in expressions. The second function of the negative key gives you the last result or answer from your previous calculation. It's helpful for quickly using that result in new calculations without having to retype it. The alpha function is the question symbol. You can use this in equations to represent an unknown or a placeholder for an undefined value. Now, let's dive into the graphing features on this calculator. This Y equals button is where you enter the equations you want to graph. When you press second and Y equals, you'll access Statplot, which is great for plotting data points. Its alpha function gives you an F1 menu, which helps you manage the settings for statistical plots, like scatter plots or histograms. This is super handy when you're working with data sets. The window key is your go-to for adjusting the graphing window, basically how much of the graph you can see and how it's scaled. If you press second before window, you open up table settings. This is where you can tweak how your table of values looks, like adjusting the step size between values. Plus, the alpha F2 menu gives you additional settings for managing your table, making it easier to organize your data. When you want to zoom in or out on your graph, the zoom button comes into play. Press second and zoom to access the format function. Here you can customize the appearance of your graph, like adjusting grid lines and access displays. The alpha F3 menu also helps you adjust the graph's format, like the style of grid lines or tick marks, giving you more control over how your graph looks. The trace button is great for moving along the graph and seeing the exact X and Y values at any point. Press second and trace to open the calculator menu. From here, you can find the zeros, minimums, maximums, and even calculate derivatives at specific points on your graph. The alpha F4 menu is the shortcut for these calculation options. Finally, the graph button displays your equations as graphs, but pressing second before graph will bring up the table. This shows you the values for the functions you're graphing. This is useful when you want to analyze specific X and Y values. The alpha function F5 menu lets you adjust the table settings like the range and step size for X values, making it easier to fine tune the data you're working with. Finally, this on off button down here doesn't do anything. If you want to remove the calculator from the screen, just click the calculator button on the left. Now, here's a very critical key. The second function for the zero key is going to be your friend when you're learning the graphing calculator. This gives you a full list of every function on the calculator as well as instructions. I'd highly recommend you look this over before your exam to give you even more details about each of the primary, second, and alpha functions and how to use them. That was a lot, I know. But knowing how to use all these buttons and their extra functions gives you so many ways to manage, zoom, analyze, and customize your graphs for any situation on your practice exam. Now, let me give you some important tips for using this calculator. Having access to a calculator is great, but using it efficiently is even better. One strategy tip is to know when to use it. Not all problems require a calculator, so don't rely on it too much. 
Sometimes mental math or estimation is faster than spending time opening and using the calculator. Be sure to check your inputs carefully. One of the biggest mistakes test takers make is entering the wrong numbers. Always double check your input before pressing the equal sign. My next tip kind of combines those last two. You can also use estimation to check your answers. Before entering numbers into the calculator, estimate what your answer should be. If your final result is far off, you may have mistyped something. Next tip, don't forget to clear the calculator before each new calculation. Making sure you're in the correct mode is also important. Another tip is for you to keep the order of operations in mind for each question. Remember PEMDAS? You should evaluate expressions based on parentheses first, followed by exponents, including square roots, then multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction, all from left to right. And my last tip is to practice using the calculator before exam day. This way you won't waste valuable time figuring it out during your test. So how can you practice? There's actually a free tutorial version of the graphing calculator on the ETS website. I've provided a direct link down in the description. All you need to do is select the exam you want to practice on and enter the code for it that'll be emailed to you. You'll get some practice equations to help you get comfortable using the calculator for a variety of math problems that'll be on the exam. There's even an option to see the solution for a problem so you can understand how the calculator can be used for it. Just use the Show Solution button at the top and click the Practice Question button to try it on your own. To get even more practice questions, you can also head over to study.com and use the full-length practice test there. The exam has a timer you can use to practice time management during the test. There's no calculator on the site, but you can use a calculator app with a graphing calculator on your tablet or phone, so you can practice with it and the timer feature at the same time. And the nice thing about the study.com practice test is that it'll give you a detailed score report at the end that shows you exactly what you need to brush up on. Now you know everything you need to use the on-screen graphing calculator like a pro. By understanding its features, practicing beforehand, and using smart strategies, you'll be able to take your practice exam with confidence. For more detailed information and practice, check out more Praxis videos on this channel. And then make your way over to study.com for lessons and practice tests for any Praxis exam. Our users boast a 92% pass rate, and our courses include full-length exams, hundreds of practice questions, and additional video lessons specifically tailored to the latest test updates. With our resources, you'll know exactly what to expect on test day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more updates on Praxis exams. And leave your questions and success stories in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Remember, we're rooting for you every step of the way. You've got this.